Welcome to another edition of Drinking with Craig and Roger. I'm Roger. And I am Craig. And you have a couple of uh, interesting bourbons for us today, right? Yes. Um, so what I wanted to do, these are two, um, I think this is a newer company, these are two newer companies doing kind of experimental-ish, uh, interesting things to try to get more complexity and age flavors into their whiskeys quicker. Uh, so both of these are a little lower priced, uh, going for um, a more sophisticated, higher priced type of thing. So we're gonna see which one's successful, which one's not. Maybe they both are, maybe they're both not. Um, I've had both, so I'm gonna keep my opinion to myself till you've had a chance to try it. And what I wanna do is get into them and try them, and then I'll talk about what each one did to achieve what's in the bottle. All right, well, uh, shall we start with the most noble one of the two? I, the I don't know if I'm going to say that, but we can start with the noble oak. Well, it says noble oak. So it says noble. It, it says that don't it worry was... about it. Just try it. Okay. Let's All just right. pour it. And then, and then we'll try it, and then I'll tell you what they did. Uh, this was gifted to the show by my friend Jamie Ertz. Thank you, Jamie. There's a tiny spider here. I'm going to move him. Right over there. Well, there you go, sir. So tiny. Oh my gosh, thank you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, so I'll pour myself a little bit. Spiders like whiskey. Let's give it a whirl here, see what we think. Ooh, it's got a sort of a very fuzzy nose to it, meaning it's, it's got something in it. It's interesting, it's different. Yeah, it's a lot different than, say, something yeah. like Jack Daniels, which has got a real clean nose. Yeah, right, yeah. It even smells oily to me. Yeah. I'm just gonna let, I'm just gonna hold my comments until you have a chance to form your own. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Oh, the, the legs aren't really quite to the top. For whatever that's worth. Look at the legs again. That's, that's the body, you know? The body. Yeah, the legs, they're, they're dying out pretty quick. There's no long strands, it's just kind of sinking right on down, pretty much. You've better. got some. It's a little better, but look, look at how fast they're disappearing. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see the color, now this is down a bit, but it's not, it's not very dark at all, the color of the whiskey. It, it's a little darker in the glass, I guess. Well, it hasn't, it hasn't aged that long. To be honest, it can't. Otherwise, it'd have a much darker color. But um, uh, it's the word coming is cloudy. It, uh, it's uh, in the flavor, in the flavor, in the body, and and in the finish. A little nebulous. It's, yeah. Well, it's it's fuzzy. It's sort of like maybe smoky a little. It's got a little bit of a. That's why I was thinking a little bit of a odd smoke to it. Mm, it, it just has a unnatural flavor. Well, I can still taste the bourbon in it. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it. It's sort of in the front and and then and then the and then the finish. But it, it, to my mind, it, it seems to be floating above this very hazy stuff that's on the in the middle and the bottom of it. Okay. These, these upper yeah. notes that are that are that are bourbon. In the finish, like it just has this kind of little bit of a saccharine sweetness it's to sweet. it. It's sweet, yeah. Um, and it's also it's sweet yet almost bitter at the same time. So what they did with this, they got, it said distilled in, in um, Indiana, so it's MGP juice. And then they bottled it in Ohio by the Noble Oak Spirits Company. Now what they did was they took the MGP distillate, aged it for a while, like you might normally do. Then they put in Spanish sherry oak staves, which I assume they kind of broke up, put it in the barrel, and then put the barrel under high heat and pressure to try to rapidly draw uh, the sherry wood flavors out of it. So basically what they're trying to do is simulate, create the flavors of a sherry matured or possibly sherry finished bourbon in a very um, short amount of time and sell it cheaper. 
So this is about $35 to $40 a bottle, I think, right around $35 a bottle, maybe 30 to 40 range. Um, so it's kind of tempting to get based on that thing you, you see like the, oh, sherry finished with sherry oak staves. I don't, I don't taste a lot of sherry in it, do you? No. Um, it has but, a weird... But they, they are not too far wrong, you know, with heat. Um, you know, this is one of the reasons why bourbon is pretty much fully aged at four to six years mm. uh, because in Kentucky it gets really hot in the summers and there's a lot of yeah. heat there and uh, you know if you're in a six story warehouse you know that heat gets pretty hot in the top six stories yeah. Yeah, so uh, my, my, I'm disappointed because I, I don't I, I have, I'm having trouble tasting any sherry in it. I taste a lot of wood. Yeah. That's what I hear, yes. wood, yeah. Sherry, oak, stave. It's, it's, um, it's just weird. It, to me, it tastes like hobbled together. You know, it's, it's not very complex. It's just kind of odd. Nothing seems to really fit together well. It doesn't create one really, it, it, right at first, it comes off like, ooh, you know, that's interesting. But then as you start to get into it a little more, it's like, oh, it's a little saccharine sweet. It's oaky. It's thin. Well, I, for you know, sure, after the third or fourth one, you'd probably think it was just fine. Well, I don't know, <laughs> because this was gifted to the show because he didn't like it. Uh, so. Well, I meant in one evening. Yeah. Well, I'll put it this way. We had a tasting of uh, about 18 different whiskeys, um, just me and a few friends. And we pulled this one out for fun, and we were all like, yeah, you could put that away now. We had a tiny taste, we were like, we took a photo of the whole lineup, and we're like, we'll just let this one slide out of the side. I think this is gonna be the kind of bottle that you buy, and you might like it first, and then you end up giving it away to a friend. Well, I good. don't think it was successful, and I don't recommend it. It doesn't look like you've got much left to give away to another friend, so it's only going to go one what one one hand me down. You know, I, I said, you know what? I don't really want it, but I'll take it to review on the show, to uh, to to you know put the knowledge out there to people. Eh, it's not so great. It's not like you're, you know, it's not super expensive or anything. It's pretty cheap, relatively, but there are much better bourbons out there for thirty-five bucks. But on the other hand, as a drink, okay, it is not harsh. No, no, it's, it's, it's not harsh. It's reasonably well aged. It's 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 it's, yeah, it's, it's saccharine sweetness. Yeah, well, you know, weird. It's just weird. That's all. It's a little weird. Don't love it. Can't can't highly recommend it. It's not a taste that I really like. Yeah. Uh, but I, again, it's uh, got a nice body. It's got some you know substance to it. You know, I, I think it's 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 fine. Um, Maybe I could compromise with you and say, you know, well, if it would cost about $20 instead of 35 then I would say it was a much better, you know, thing to have. Now, before we move on to this other one, really quick, I want to jump back to a previous video because I just figured out this is a perfect thing to pair it with. If you want a bourbon that is finished and sherry and other things, then this is the one to get. This is the same price. It's about $35. We reviewed this previously and really quick. Let's do a let's do a little side by side here because for the same price on the same shelf, you're going to find this Legent um, which is a bourbon of the same I think this is 90 so this is for this is 90 proof. The Legent is 94 proof. So you're getting a little bit more ah. in terms of alcohol and it's just so much Oh, it's a much more, God. the bourbon smell is just much more intense on the nose. Yes, and, and also this uh, the sweetness is real natural and delicious. Yeah, I hear. Oh, that is night and day. Mmm, nuttiness. Uh, just more, yeah, nutty, yeah, it, it's also nutty. cleaner. It just seemed like this, this noble oak was kind of, you know, fuzzy. You know, just unclear. It's, um, it's yeah. you know, uh, almost, almost like a dirty log. You know, you know. <laughs> a dirty log. Then you switch over to the Legent, and it's just beautiful. Oh, it's, it's clear. Yeah, it's clean, mm. and sweet. Yeah. So if that's what you're going for, skip this bottle. Get this bottle. Eh. Okay. If, yeah, that, uh, I, I'll agree with you on that one. 
Okay, so then I really wanted to talk about this because this is pretty exciting. I got this bottle uh, when I was in Tennessee. I don't think this is distributed in Georgia. Uh, I've never seen it anywhere and no one here uh, has heard of it. But I was at a package store and the guy who kind of runs their uh, whiskey section was highly recommending this. He had his name next to it for his suggestion. He actually let me try it. It's my first time in a package store where they could just have a whole bar of whiskey available and let you try something that they have. It was amazing. I wouldn't have gotten it otherwise. And this is about $35 uh, and same price. Pretty, yeah, same price as the Noble Oak. So this is Opadon, uh, which is a small distillery that is actually doing their own distillate. And they are in Wheeling, Illinois. So, um, and this is made from grain. Uh, obviously, it's not a malt. You know, All whiskey. whiskey is made from grain. Yes, it's not malt. <laughs> so, in other words, but it's, it's called Smoke and Sea. And I think the reason they say that is because it has, well, we'll see. I'll save it. I don't want to talk about what they do yet. Just want to give you a try. So, I've, I've been really interested to let people try this one. It is very unique. And this is advertising itself as a bourbon with all sorts of added notes. Yes. Well, it doesn't smell much like a bourbon to me. That's, uh, no. It smells... Um, nope. Uh, it's indistinct. Um, it's maybe sort of an oaky smell? Oaky and smoky. Maybe a little bit. I, I, it's hard for me, but maybe I'll, I'll get more of it in the finish. Mm -hmm. ah, you're going to have to wait for the finish. It's right there in the main body of it. Yeah. Oh, and it's, oh wow, that's got a lot of smoke. There's a lot going on in this glass. It's, it is interesting and it is very good, tasty. Uh, but you know, it doesn't taste a lot like a bourbon to me. It nope. tastes more like uh, some sort of scotch whiskey that has uh, gotten, I, I'm not, not sure what else is in there. But yeah, but it's more like that than a than a bourbon to me. Bourbon, you know, you got to have that corn taste, and this doesn't have very much mm -hmm. of it. It's it's, uh, well, it's it's in French oak, they say. Well, here's what they do. Uh, well, the French the oak flavor, probably had wine in it or something. The flavor, to me, I get these um, pretty pronounced chocolatey notes. It's like chocolate graham cracker, and then a light like oily um, smokiness to it, light, very pleasant peaty smoke. Oh, there are, there are so many Scotch whiskeys that have much less smoke in them than this. Yep, so here's what they do. So this is, mm, I, had a, I had a list of it somewhere. There's a lot of things going on here. So what this distillery does, um, obviously this is $35, it's 46% it's, um, alcohol. Um, that's a good price point for what you're getting in here. And proof, the way yeah. they're able to achieve that is they do a lot of mixing, matching, blending uh, kind of things. So they're using two of their other products. They have a straight bourbon whiskey that they make, which we know what is in that. And then they have a Solera aged uh, bourbon. And I wonder if they elaborate on here. It's a combination of our four grain bourbon and Solera aged bourbon mash bills. Now I know their Solera aged bourbon is a five grain mash bill, including like, uh, I want to say chocolate malt. And they, they, they had several grains that I remember seeing in beers. Some of them are a little unusual. No oats? No, no oats. Okay. Um, so, and then it's Solera aged, so they are leaving. So basically for that one, they put them into three different barrels, French, um, I don't remember what they are. One is sherry, one is like a French oak, and one is a new American oak. And yeah. then the French and the sherry, they leave part of what's in the barrel there when they refill it the next time. So it's always retaining a little bit of the older stuff that's in there. So that's that one. So they have their two different bourbons that each one is pretty complex, or at least the Solera is pretty complex in its own right, trying to get a more complex flavor quicker. And then they take those and finish it in fr French oak and in peated Islay Scotch barrels. So that is a heck of a lot of mixing and matching and blending. Yeah. The French oak adds structure and dark fruit notes, while the Islay casks add a layer of smoke, earth, and sea to our already malty and chocolatey bourbon. 
So that's what I was getting in there. Yep, they, they, that's, that is, that is uh, sort of what I taste here. But yeah. the, the dominant taste, besides the bourbony taste, is the, 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 the smoke, the, the Isla. That, 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 that is mm -hmm. much more forward mm -hmm. and much more, more in your face than the French oak has to be. Well, it's in your face, but it's not blowing your head off by any means. No, I mean, peat heads are, are not going to be raving about the mass of peat Maybe in you this. don't like the it's, connotation to that, but I mean, it, but it's it's just the the, uh, the the peat is is sort of you know right there. It's right up in it's up present close the whole time, and, up close and personal. You smell yeah. it, you yeah. yeah, you smell it, you you taste it on the palate, and it's big on the finish. But so to me, this has kind of that sweet. Uh, richness of a bourbon uh, and with other interesting notes like I said chocolatey which I don't find too often well it's just it's just more rounded it's got a lot of different kinds of little things that pop mm. out but yes. still the smoke is just it's what I taste the most mm -hmm. but yeah it's I sweet. get to see in there it's sweet mm -hmm. uh, yep. yeah and uh, I, I, it's very smooth so I don't know how long they've aged it but it's been enough yeah um, and uh, you know, the, the Solera method is a, a traditional one for making some sherries. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are sherries that claim you know, to be using barrels that are like several hundred years old. Yeah. You know, and they say that, you know, they're, they're theoretically at least, you know, there's some, some sherry from the very first, you know, barrel like 200 years ago. But uh, as far as what you can actually taste, after about yeah. 50 to 60 years, whatever it was earlier has been reduced so much that it really can't affect the taste anymore. But it is tradition, and we can mm. be proud that we have been using this same barrel for 200 years, you know. Right. Wow. But I was pretty excited by this. It's a really good find, um, and I hope that they're able to catch on a little more and get a little bit bigger distribution and following. Um, I would really like to try their other stuff, but it's one I'm definitely going to be keeping my eye out for, uh, personally. So I'm, I'm real impressed with the Opadon. What do you think? I, I like it very much. You know? uh, we really haven't tasted any, any whiskey here that I wouldn't drink. You know, But uh, the Noble Oak would be on my very the lowest part of what we just did today. Yeah, it's drinkable, but yeah, I'd rather just, there's so many other things I'd rather have. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, so definitely highly recommend this. I thought this was very uh, interesting uh, in its own right. I can't say, have you ever had anything that tasted like this? Scotch whiskey. But that had the same body? Yeah. yeah. Okay. There, there, were, there are some scotches that are you know, full bodied and oily. Now, how much do you think those cost? The ones that are similar to this? Unfortunately, $50 to $100. See? Yeah. So I think it's really interesting what they're doing. They're able to do this at a very reasonable price point. Yeah. Get some really interesting characteristics there from yeah. a really complex blend of things. So what That's they're doing is def working. Definitely a whiskey you do not want to use in a cocktail. No, no, no. This is going to. This won't work in too many cocktails, and it's going to over. It's going to stand out too much. No, no, no. This what is you want good it in, in some, something like this where mm -hmm. you can smell it and taste it. And it's a good neat sipper. You don't really want this on ice, I don't think. Um, it's no, not strong you, enough to hold you up to it. You could put a tiny, tiny bit of water in it if you want. If you wanted to, but I don't see a need to. It's no. not harsh in any way. It's no. not powerful. No. It's a good, interesting little thing that's just good by itself. Okay. So, yeah. mm, we do recommend this. Yes. That's a Open do not recommend Noble Oak. Recommend the Legend instead, and we highly recommend the Opadon Smoke yes. and Sea. And hope to see more from these guys. Uh, let us know if in the comments, uh, have you had anything from Opadon or Noble Oak? Let us know what you think. Uh, I'd love to hear it, and um, feel free to like the video if you do, and subscribe so you can see all the interesting stuff we're going to be doing in the future. Absolutely. All right, cheers. Cheers.